Michael Burry is very well known for making stock market predictions, some of which are so impressive that they've bridged the gap between nerdy financial analysis and popular culture. But how often is he actually right? Or maybe a better question is, does he make a ton of incorrect predictions that we've just forgotten about? Well, I've been following and archiving every single prediction that Michael Burry has made on Twitter over the past couple of years to answer that exact question, including a scary prediction that has so far come completely true and will reach a conclusion in 2024. On the 13th of June, 2022, Burry wrote in a tweet, the theater took more than a decade to overstuff. Not likely everyone gets out in less than a year. Burry, of course, here is referring to the classic analogy of someone shouting fire in a crowded theater. When panic spreads in financial markets, it can sometimes result in very rapid declines. In this case, however, Burry is predicting a long drawn out crash that will unwind over multiple years. At the time of this prediction, inflation in the US was about 9% and the Federal Reserve had just begun raising the federal funds interest rate from 1% to 1.2%, and the stock market had fallen by about 15% in just six months. So his tweet could be interpreted to mean that investors should expect that recent decline to continue for some time. Well, that hasn't happened. Since that tweet in June 2022, the market did keep falling another 8%, but since then, it has rallied 29%, putting the stock market about 18% higher than it was at the time of his prediction. Now, of course, you could definitely argue that 18 months isn't enough time to know if this prediction will come true or not, and I will cover that specific case and argument a little bit later in this video. But for now, it did seem like Burry was expecting things to continue worsening in 2022 because of another tweet that he made the exact same day. Getting one thing right is hard. 1999. Tech bubble, 01 to 05 value revival, 2005 housing bubble, 2009 almond farms, 2020 co-bottom, 2020 lockdown horrors, 2021 meme stocks, 2021 crypto leverage, 2021 inflation, 2022 not done yet, late 2022 question mark. These are all events that Burry is claiming to have predicted, or at least was able to invest successfully in because of his portfolio strategy. A great example of this is the 1999 tech bubble and what happened next with value stocks. In a letter to investors in the year 2000, Burry explained that he didn't exactly predict the tech bubble bursting, but his way of picking stocks helped him avoid the worst of it. He said, The best thing about our fund wasn't making 8.24% in just two months, but rather not suffering as much as others when the stock market went down. I can confidently say that my strategy is all about reducing the risk of losing money in individual stocks. His fund started in 2000, and despite the Nasdaq falling by 22.9%, he managed to make an 8.25% return. He also started buying small cap value stocks in 2001, thinking that even though the tech bubble had burst, larger companies in the market would also struggle, which turned out to be true as the market fell by over 40% in a two-year bear market that ended in 2002. Burry has a track record of predicting significant financial events. So when he hinted at something big happening by the end of 2022, it caught people's attention. However, for the broader market, that big event he hinted at didn't happen. Something significant did happen though, when FTX collapsed and Sam Bankman Fried got into legal trouble for a massive financial fraud. But considering all of Burry's tweets in June 2022, it's hard to credit him with predicting this specific event. A little while after those first tweets, Burry said this, Adjusted for inflation, 2022 first half the S&P 500 down 25 to 26%, and NASDAQ down 34 to 35%, Bitcoin down 64 to 65%. That was multiple compression. Next up, earnings compression, so maybe halfway there. Here's a simpler way to understand how stocks and markets are valued. Think of it like this. The value of a company's stock, 
or the entire stock market depends on two main things. First, it's about how much money these companies make, their earnings. Second, it's about how investors feel about those earnings, which we call the earnings multiple. For example, let's go back to June 2021. At that time, the S&P 500 companies made around $159 for each share of their stock. And the earnings multiple, which is like a popularity score for those earnings, was 27. If you do the math, $159 times 27, you get $4,293. That's the value of the S&P 500 in June 2021. Now, here's the important part. Even if a company's earnings stay the same or go up, the stock price can still go down if investors don't like those earnings as much. This happens when the earnings multiple goes down. One big reason for this is changes in interest rates. From mid-2021 to mid-2022, the Federal Reserve started raising interest rates to control rising prices. Higher interest rates tend to push the earnings multiple down. So, even though companies were making more money, the market's popularity score, or the earnings multiple, dropped from 27 to 20. As a result, the overall stock market went down by about 12%. That's what Burry meant when he talked about multiple compression. Now, Burry's prediction in mid-2022 was that companies would earn less money, which he called earnings compression. And he was right about that. S&P 500 companies did earn less, going from $192 per share to $181 per share, a 6% drop. But here's the twist. If earnings multiples hadn't gone back up and had stayed at 20, then the market would actually be down by 4.5% since Burry's prediction, instead of being up by a lot. So, to sum it up, Burry saw that the earnings multiple of the S&P 500 went down, and he predicted that corporate earnings would also go down. He was right about earnings going down, but he didn't predict the stock market's direction accurately. It went up again. Maybe it's just a temporary rise, and the multiple will go down again, which could make Burry's prediction come true. That's what he seems to be suggesting in his August 2022 tweet. In one of his tweets, Burry talked about something that happened a long time ago. He said that in 1974, after the stock market had a big fall, the front page of the New York Times didn't even talk about stocks. Instead, it mentioned that the Federal Reserve, which is like the bank for the country, lowered interest rates to 7.75%. This was supposed to make it easier for people to borrow money. As a result, the stock market went up by 53% in just six months. But it turned out to be a big mistake. What he meant was that the Federal Reserve made an error by making borrowing money cheaper too soon. This made the stock market happy for a little while, but it caused another round of high prices, which we call inflation. To control it, they had to raise interest rates again. The stock market then had a rough time and went down for over 10 years. Now, something similar seems to be happening today. We had a period of high inflation and the Federal Reserve raised interest rates. This caused the stock market to go down. But now, as inflation has calmed down and returned to more normal levels, people think the Federal Reserve will lower interest rates again in 2024. We can see this because the interest rate on one-year government bonds is lower than the rate on one-month government bonds people expect interest rates to be lower in a year from now. This is also one reason why the earnings multiple, which is like a popularity score for stocks, has gone up recently. So, to sum it all up, Burry's predictions in 2022 mostly revolved around one big idea. He believed we are sitting in a temporary rising stock market that could turn ugly if another inflation surge is on the horizon. He hasn't been entirely wrong, but we'll have to wait and see if all of his predictions come true. Burry's most recent prediction echoes this sentiment. In early 2023, he wrote, maybe accompanied by a chart of the stock market from 2000 to 2003, which shows an initial 31% decline that began in 2000, followed by a 10% rally, which lasted about six months before the remainder of the crash occurred, another 29% decline over six months. 
This prediction is pretty self-explanatory. He backed this up by betting against the S&P 500 and NASDAQ, but we don't know all the details of that bet. It's possible he made a small bet on a big stock market drop. Whether he was right or not, we don't know yet unless he tells us. What we know for sure is that in 2023, the stock market didn't go down. It went up by 21%. This makes it one of the best years ever for the stock market, especially if you owned a lot of tech stocks. Burry also said something else in his tweet. He said that inflation had reached its highest point, but it wouldn't be the last time it goes up during this cycle. He thought that the CPI, which is a way to measure how prices change, might go down, even into negative territory in the second half of 2023. He also believed that the US was heading into a recession, which means the economy is doing very badly. But it turns out he was wrong about that. The CPI didn't go negative in the second half of 2023, and the US is far from being in a recession. In fact, the US economy grew really fast in the last quarter, at a rate of 5.2% after adjusting for inflation. So, in this case, his predictions didn't come true. I have to give some points to Burry for his predictions because he has been right about a lot of stuff that he's said publicly. Whenever he's been wrong, which is a few times, it's because he's placed a timeline on a particular economic event occurring. And that right there, I think, is the most important lesson here. I love listening to Burry's commentary on the economy because he is very well researched and understands market mechanics better than almost anyone. But timing these economic predictions is extremely difficult, even for the brightest minds, which is why many investors don't consider these big macroeconomic shifts in their investing strategy. Instead, pick investments that allow you to ride the waves of the economy, not ones that rely on you knowing whether a recession is coming or not, or whether there's another surge of inflation. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more weekly investment tips. Leave a comment below. Happy investing.